So if you've been following along with the build, you know that right now I'm in the middle of putting together all the parts for the aft fuselage of the airplane. And so that's why I've got this big pile of stuff over there and up on the shelves that I'm getting ready to prime. So why am I holding on to the elevator right now? Well, it's because I'm going to have to open this thing back up, take those rivets out of the leading edge and do a little bit of a repair to it. If you'd like to avoid doing that with your airplane and you haven't gotten to this stage yet, stick around, I'll explain. So first, a little bit of a background. Um, I ordered my tail kit for the RV-14 in September, the very end of September of 2023. The uh, kit actually shipped a little earlier than expected and I received it right around the end of February of 24. So in the meantime, while I was waiting for everything to ship out, I'm going through the website. I downloaded all the plans to kind of get a head start reading through all the instructions and that kind of fun stuff. And then I also came across the section where all the service bulletins are and service letters and that kind of thing. So I thought I'd take a, a, a look at that and see you know, what the history had been like, that kind of thing. In the process of doing that, I did note um, one service bulletin in particular, uh, service bulletin 00043, which came out in September of 2023. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Kind of what I was looking at was, are there any service bulletins that are recent since I received my instructions um, or since my kit was shipped? The 2023 was probably the closest one, so I took a quick look at that. But I noticed that the date on the service bulletin was September of 23. Again, I received the kit in February of 24, so I figured Anything that happened uh, that was incorporated into a service bulletin or um, what ended up also being a change in the instructions would have been incorporated into my kit, which shipped out about six months later. But you know what happens when we assume, right? So long story short, um, the change in the instructions that occurred in 2023, which also occurred in line with the service bulletin, the service bulletin would actually trigger the change to building instructions for this. Um, those didn't make it into the plans that I received. I'm not sure if the revision that I had, maybe it was already packaged up months earlier before my kit shipped out and that's why I kind of got old plans, if you will, or slightly out of date. But at the end of the day, it's up to me to check all that stuff out. So. Um, if you received plans um, around the same time that I did, just double check um, for this in particular. But anywhere that you see a revision, you know, just make sure that you've got the latest. Unfortunately, in the plans, there's not like, you know, revision five of the plans and all the pages say revision five. Um, when they revise a page in here, just that page has a, re a change to its revision number. So other pages may have, you know, revision zero or revision one, for example, but one of the pages that you're working on may have been updated and it should say revision two, but the rest will still say zero or one. So it makes it a little bit harder to track it down. So you just got to take a look at that. But what's this all about anyway? So what was happening um, on some RV10s and RV14s with the elevators in particular is that the rivets that are right along here on the aft spar we're starting to crack. Uh, well, not the, the rivets, but the skin around the rivets were starting to develop some, some cracks. So they started seeing this in a variety of airplanes. Some were doing aerobatics, some weren't. Um, so they issued a service bulletin in September about that with a fix for it. And the fix basically, what the service bulletin calls out for is to go ahead and inspect yours. And if you find cracks, you know, on the skins along those rivets, number one thing that you're gonna do is go ahead and stop drill the cracks. The other thing that you're gonna do is you're going to open up the leading edge here and you'll put some block spacers in there, pry it open, and then through the lightning holes that are in the spar itself, you're gonna go down in there and you're basically gonna run a bead of tank sealant along the top edge where that spar and the skin meet. Because if you look in the plans, the rear spar has almost kind of a backwards C curve to it. 
So it's a little bit bent beyond 90 degrees because of the taper toward the trailing edge there. And there where the skin comes in, that leaves kind of a pretty big opening there between the skin and any metal down there. So what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna put the tank sealant in there and create kind of a fillet along that. That just kind of helps to absorb some of the vibration that happens between the skin and the spar to take a little bit of the stress off of the skin at each rivet point. Um, the other thing that you're gonna do if you had the cracks in addition to stop drilling, laying that in, is then you're also going to go ahead and you're gonna add an additional rivet in between each rivet just again to uh, add a little bit more structural integrity to it and again relieve some of the strain on the skin around each rivet just try to spread that load out a little bit more so that was the fix for all the owners that are out there that already you know put theirs together with the old instructions what the new instructions tell you to do which unfortunately i didn't have when i built this um, is before you close this up and before you put the front spar on there, which blocks your access from getting your hand down in there, is once you've got the two skins on there and you've got a nice big opening, you're gonna go down there and you're gonna run a, a bead of tank sealant along that edge and make a nice fillet on that, um, and then proceed to close it all up. So it's just an extra step, basically before you insert the front spar and close this thing up, when you've got nice, easy access to that rear spar. Um, and that way, again, it helps to share that load and put a little bit less stress on the skin right around each rivet and hopefully prevent these cracks from happening in the first place. Because I didn't catch the notice on that in time, I've already closed mine up. Um, I was a little bit frustrated when I realized that after closing these up because everything else came out really nice on this and I was pretty happy with the results. So I just decided to keep my spirits up and move on with working on the aft fuselage um, while I kind of let it sink in that I have to open these back up and then try to work through lightning holes, which makes it a little more challenging to lay that sealant in there. So uh, that's something I'm gonna do in a video coming up uh, after I get the aft fuselage done. Uh, I'm just gonna let this sit on the shelf for now because it's not a big deal. But I just wanted to share that with you guys out there because uh, I know that some of you are in the process um, of kind of just a few parts behind me in the build here. Um, but I wanted to share that little nugget of information with you um, that if your plans don't call for laying that tank sealant along that rear spar before you close this up, check you probably have the old revisions in there. So save yourself a little bit of a headache. Go ahead and get that done uh, while you can. So how did I come across the mistake? Well, so what happened is when you're building this, uh, when you're doing the rear spar and you're riveting all of that together with the, buck, with the, the long bucking bar, um, they tell you to leave six rivets out of each end of the elevator in the plants. They say, don't rivet these, now you're gonna rivet them later. So I didn't. And I'm moving forward through the build and get everything kind of all wrapped up. And then I get to where I've got these six holes left and I'm digging through the plans and I can't find anywhere where it says, hey, put those final rivets in. Because there were several other rivets that get left out um, when you're riveting things up, up here so that you can lift up the skin and get underneath there and put some other components in there. Then you close that back up toward the very end but it never said anything about those six. And it was driving me crazy because I'm thinking, well, am I like leaving it for, you know, something to do with when you put the whole airplane together, which didn't really make any sense. So I dug through, went on the, uh, the van's website. I didn't really see anything there because I just went in where I could download the plans for my airplane. Um, and what I downloaded matched what I had. So still kind of at a loss for it. Well, turns out, just so you know, when you go under there, under your account, you download those plans. Those are the plans that exactly match what they ship to you. They're not necessarily the latest plans, even though they're electronic. Um, for any revisions, you've got to go into that revision section and look that up. So long story short, though, I reached out to Vans, talked to the tech support there, and he said, well, which version of the plans do you have? So that's when we kind of discovered that I have the old version of the plans. So the updated plans now tell you when to go ahead and close that up, like specifically call it out in the plans because I think it was kind of an oversight and a lot of people like calling in saying, well, when do I close these things up? So that made me realize I had an old version of the plans. And so I looked at the stuff on the new one and that's when I kind of realized that 
the step where they call out for putting tank sealant here. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, what's this all about? I didn't put tank sealant on mine up there. I just put the tank sealant back here on, on the ribs, right? So, but all of a sudden it was talking about putting tank sealant on the spar itself. And I, so I was at a loss for that. Well, that led me to the service bulletin, um, which then led me to realize that not only had I had the issue with the six rivets, but a much bigger issue uh, with not being able to move forward without reopening something that I had just closed up. So needless to say, I was pretty disheartened <laughs> and pretty dejected. And also I had a couple of people online that were asking me about the service bulletin and what was I going to do about that, which I didn't even know what they were talking about at that time. And then after I saw the service bulletin, I kind of realized what they were talking about. Uh, because there's two things that I could do on this, really. Uh, one thing that I could do is what the service bulletin calls out for for the, all the owners who've already finished this, which is don't do anything. Just keep inspecting that rear spar skin uh, and keep an eye on it for any cracks that might develop. And if you have cracks that start to develop, then you treat them in line with the service bulletin. So that was my first thought is, well, I could just kind of wait and see how it goes. But it just means that eventually I'd probably have to do it. And then if I do have to do it, it's gonna be ugly, right? Cause I'm gonna have to stop drill those holes. I'm gonna have to add rivets in there and it's just not gonna look very nice. So after I calm down and I've had time to have fun building the, uh, the aft fuselage section, um, I'm in a better mood. So I'll be able to go ahead and do that. It's just part of the build process. So we'll get it done, so. When I do this uh, service bulletin, so I'm just gonna basically follow the, the guidance in the service bulletin as I kind of explained. Um, when I do that, I'll make a video on it for anybody else who's out there that already has one of these built, has already been flying, um, and wants to address that, just so you can kind of see me walk through the process, so. All right, short video. I'm gonna get back to work on the aft fuselage and uh, get it ready to prime. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.